Couple weeks uh, in a row now been a little rocky. And where do you think we may be going from here? Yeah, uh, if, if we finish this week the way we've started it, it'll be the third week in a row where we've given a lot more ground back than we've gained. It makes sense to me. You look at the run-up that we had uh, from, let's call it, April directly into earnings season, and then the reaction basically being sell the news. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that outcome. I don't think stocks should rally 20% then report the earnings that everyone was excited about, and then rally another 10%. I, to me, it's unnecessary. Um, so this is, I think it's, I think it's fine. If you look at uh, August generally, and then even August based on the presidential cycle in the third year, which is where we are in 2023, this is all very standard, um, this, 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 kind of, uh, this kind of action. So that's where I am on it. As far as the China stuff, China's been a, an economy in slowdown for most of the last 10 years. They've effectively had a lost decade in their, in their stock market. And I know they're doing some new stimulus stuff. It doesn't seem to be enough. People aren't that excited about it. The reopening was underwhelming. I was never investing in anything based on, like, a blockbuster Chinese economy. So I'm definitely not going to sell on that either. You know, Steph, um, it used to be when China sort of sniffles, everybody else gets a cold. Now, they've been sniffling a lot lately, right? The, yeah. the reopen's been a sputter at best, and the markets, for the most part, brushed it off. Now, not so much, right? Now, they unexpectedly cut rates. The slowdown appears real. How much does it matter? Well, it, it does matter, um, but I think the good news is that they are stimulating or they're trying to. It's just a little bit less than what we thought, but it's kind of like slowly trickling every week or so, some sort of measure. So they are, they are seeing the slowdown, right? But I don't think the entire economy is slow because I, I listen to companies on the consumer facing side, and Estee Lauder is going to be really interesting because they have 30% of their. That? I did. I did. But, um, not a great sale. But it'll be interesting to hear because they have 30 percent of their exposure in China, right? Mm -hmm. But we did hear good things from Nike. They had a 48 percent same-store sales number, excuse me, um, Starbucks at a 48 percent same-store sales number. We had Nike actually had 19 percent in-store growth. Um, we've had Las Vegas Sands and Macau, both from Wynn and Las Vegas Sands. Numbers are good, right? So. There are pockets of China that I would be investing in. Those, that's, and I'm looking at the U.S. facing companies yeah. into into China, on the again on the reopening side. So but on the other side, you're not talking about the group of stocks that I want to talk about, though, as it relates to China and the macro industrials, well, which that's not you have a mm -hmm. reasonably significant exposure to. I and have been looking, I think, to add more exposure in that area. I think there are two pockets of industrials that are seeing a lot of momentum. Aerospace, aviation, Boeing and GE are, are two, right, that I do own. Mm -hmm. And then it's reshoring, right? And, and that's Ingersoll Rand and Parker Hannafin. Um, it's not so much Caterpillar. It's not, not so much deer. They've had nice runs for sure, but they do have more exposure in China. So I, I have a different way of looking at the industrial side. Um, I do have 3M that has some exposure as well. But there, there are stories out there in, in industrial land. They're not based on China. But again, I'm, look, I think that China is important to watch. It's slow, fine. At the, and the, at the same time, the U.S. economy is really doing well. We were just talking before the show opened. The Atlanta Fed GDP now for this current quarter in the U.S., is at five percent. It wasn't supposed to happen like that, well, right? It's doing Everyone doing well thought... because it's a, you know, obviously a consumption-based economy, and two thirds of it are relative to the consumer. Right. And you know, I've been talking about being positive and upbeat about the consumer sure. because of with, jobs with and good, wages. With good reason. But, but I think. On the manufacturing side, we are bottoming, Scott, I do. I think the PMIs are bottoming. Even the Empire Fed number today, which I know headline was ugly, but the forward-looking uh, indicators were actually quite strong. So I think you are bottoming. And again, we go back to onshore, reshore, whatever. That's a big theme, and that's a big part of why I think we have held in on, in terms of the momentum. And why is that so important? Well, we just passed three billion, a trillion dollars of stimulus to to rebuild America. And that's very powerful. And so despite the fact that we've seen higher interest rates, the, it's this other side that's kind of offsetting it. And it's really pretty, it's pretty encouraging. By the way, the one thing I thought last week, which we were away, uh, is most important, unit labor costs actually fell and yet productivity went higher. 
that is actually bullish for GDP as well. And then retail sales, I know we're going to talk about it, but the control group today being much better than expected, that too is a function of a better GDP. And you put it all together, and that's why we got a 5% number today.